Hello everyone and welcome to the uh, next best of three in the uh, Intel Extreme Masters Season 2 LA Challenge. We're still in the lower bracket and uh, we're gonna see an Undead versus Orc best of three. This time it is the uh, Korean Undead player Suceria spawning on the left hand side here of Echo Isles. And uh, he's starting with Ultra Crypt and Sigurat and his opponent is uh, Kiwikaki, the uh, Canadian Orc player. And um, as it was in the previous best of three, as this in every best of three in the lower bracket, the loser is going to be out of the tournament. The winner is going to uh, play on and uh, the winner is going to play against the loser of um, the best of three between Focus and Nilknarf. So um, interestingly, we've seen both of these players in uh, this exact same matchup previously, uh, losing yeah somewhat clearly, I guess. Kiwikaki facing uh, Lucifer, which uh, ended up in a 0-2 from his perspective. The game on Echo Isles though was uh, pretty close and he definitely could have won that. Whereas uh, Suceria faced Lun and uh, that wasn't really too close a best of three. But uh, we do see quite a major difference here already between Suceria and uh, Lucifer. Lucifer against, um, against Kiwikaki went for a fiend build with a super late tier two tech twice with a huge load of fiends. And uh, Suceria, on the other hand, starts by, uh, you know, going for a couple of ghouls, not adding a graveyard yet at all. And I was just wondering about this before I started the best of three, because of course, uh, Suceria and um, Lucifer at the time, the uh, Meteor Makers, Undeads, uh, you know, long time training partners and certainly um, sharing their ideas about, um, you know, each of the matchups. But it looks like both of them do have quite a bit of a different approach. It looks like Suceria is going ahead, yeah, going straight for the uh, mercenary camp here. Or is it just, no, he's actually gonna go ahead and creep it, pulling the creeps away with the skeleton, going for the Geomancer first, so it doesn't wanna be slowed all too much. On the other hand, the Blade Master is, uh, yeah, finished with the green camp here, picked up the claws, and uh, now with double heal staffs is heading out on the map. Cecilia, on the other hand, picked up the energy pendant early on. Great item for him. And they are certainly worth the effort, especially with the Echo Light. As he saw that the Blade Master was uh, creeping here early on, he knew that he was uh, pretty safe in this early creeping endeavor. So he got a very, very key creep camp and item very early on, completely for free. The Blade Master is coming in from the right hand side. Is he gonna be in time for the Null Brute? Yes, he is. Tome of Agility, well, not picked up by any. Of the players now, the DK picked it up, first coil onto one of the ghouls here. But he still has 260 more mana thanks to the uh, energy pendant. Blade Master continues creeping here, he's gonna get level 2 from this poacher. And um, yeah, DK with the ghouls is heading back out again. Let's see, Blade Master's getting the last hit here as well. And now he's got a retreat. So Cecilia with a timely tech here. Um, slightly behind the one of Kiwikaki, who is uh, keeping track of the Undead army with this Blade Master. The Goose would certainly love to do some creeping here. Windwalk is forced by uh, surrounding the Blade Master, but he's gonna have two more Windwalks after that, so not really any trouble for him just yet. Grunts in the meantime haven't really done anything thus far. I think they've just idled around. I guess eventually they are gonna start creeping something, or should at least. Not really sure why uh, he's just you know, running around with them. It looks like he's looking to get an engagement. Perhaps he wants wanted to use them for a creep check, anticipating the undead moving down here to creep these very vulnerable um, Forest Joy Berserkers. Very vulnerable due to their medium armor against the normal attack damage of all of these ghouls. So pretty easy targets, generally speaking. So Syria is adding another cigarette to wall of the Echo Lights here, as well as the Graveyard and a Blade Master. 
is getting some more creeping down on his own. Yeah, so Syria kind of not so sure. Is he gonna go ahead and creep the next uh the next Merc camp? Yeah, it looks like he's going to do just that. That is an extremely interesting creep route here by him. And I guess that's the definitely the better trade here for the Undead player. Blade Master did get the Ogre Magi in the middle, sure, did get the potion of greater healing as well, but this is a huge load of XP and a ring of regeneration. Well, I guess it doesn't hurt, but the DK has got a lot of regeneration thanks to the Unholy Aura. And, uh, you know, once the mid-game begins, the damage output and the lockdown of the Ensnare becomes, you know, becomes so much damage output that the Ring of Regeneration doesn't really impact the game as much anymore as it does in the early game. BM does not get an XP tome here. DK has reached level 3 already and if Kiwikaki sees this inventory he's gonna be uh, not too excited realizing that the second Merc Camp has been crept by the Undead as well. So SH, one beast tree is going to finish, the second one has been cancelled down here. Tier 3 tech started immediately by the Undead and a very quick sacrificial pit, no slaughterhouse just yet. But we're gonna have the first shade on the field extremely early on. SH is out right now. Bunch of skeletons coming in. DK gets hexed even. Very early on here. This tree gonna do all too much to him. Goose are retreating. A blade master is kind of idling down here. I guess gonna go ahead and creep the ogre matcher here. Does have an inventory slot for the item. And he can certainly use the experience. Especially since, you know, he's been. Um, or Syria has been able to steal a huge load of experience from the side of uh, the orc player. Gloves of haste for the blade master and level 3. Looks like he's just gonna take the entire creep camp here. DK has been hiding here. Another two skeletons are coming in. Let's see. Is he gonna go for the peons or is he gonna try and cancel the beast tree one more time? SH starts creeping in the meantime as well. Ghouls not harvesting lumber here. Slaughterhouse coming for Caesarea. Yeah, and uh, SH of course wants to continue creeping. Let's see if the DK is really going to be able to do all too much about it. I guess SH should be placed up here just to make sure to be able to throw a hex at the DK in case he comes in to finish this Ogre Matcher with a coil. But I guess the DK has different plans. He's going in for these uh, peons. A Wind Rider is out for uh, Kiwikaki. Alright, so it's gonna try and counter these uh, ghouls with Wind Riders. So I guess we're likely, to, yeah, we're likely to see like two fiends or so, and web together with uh, frenzy ghouls, with proper micro, can be a great weapon against wind riders on the side of the orc, especially if there's a shadow hunter to uh, back them up instead of a TC. TC with stomp into a huge lot of ghouls, and um, the focus fire of some wind riders to follow it up, also. Certainly not to be underestimated. Shadowhunter is doing some good creeping here. Gonna get close to level 3 here already after finishing the Ogre Mauler. Healing up in the meantime. Did find close attack plus 6 down here. And he's going for the very early expansion. Interesting. Not really sure if he really has the means to hold that. Lich is out. Orb has been bought immediately. DK is... Uh, yeah, looks like he bought another... Um, Rod of Necromancy and um, Ceciria starts doing a bit more creeping here immediately with the shade. He sees everything that the Orc army is doing here. He sees that the Shadow Hunter is gonna get level 3 here already. So some pretty good creeping there by him. The Lich, uh, you know, really wants to have level 2 as well. Isn't gonna quite get there and the Wind Rider is being caught here. Huge loss for uh, Kiwikaki, but it was an illusion. <laughs> so never mind. <laughs> All right, fair enough. I was just wondering why he was uh, flying around there. Would have been a huge loss by uh, Kibikaki. Finishing the uh, creep camp here, getting level 3. And uh, gonna have to defend this push right now. One fiend on the field. Second crypt is coming. He's got a statue sitting in the back of his base. So a uh, bit surprising since he knew about the whereabouts of the... Uh, of the orc army. Could have just brought that statue to uh, 
you know, the rest of his army. Now TPing out, given that his entire army isn't there and, you know, that he's just investing into this uh, second crypt. And I guess he's going to, uh, you know, gather up his forces and go for uh, one big push against the expansion instead of taking like a half-assed fight where he'd end up, uh, you know, not being in the perfect position and trading, you know, worse than he should be. Next creep hemp has been taken, circlet for the lich. And Kiwikaki is creeping some more as well. So it looks like the Great Hall is going to finish here. Kiwikaki at 50, Zasiria at 50 as well, it's gonna finish uh, the cigarette in just a second. Still repairing the statue here, I'm a bit surprised about that. So it's got two statues, two fiends and a whole bunch of ghouls. With a double crypt he could be adding, you know, a large number of fiends quite quickly here of course. Yeah, so Syria is just taking this slowly, not uh, rushing into anything against this expansion. Did he even scout it yet? No, he didn't. I guess it's not too much of a stretch though, to imagine that expansion. Very, very awkward position to begin the fight for Kirikaki. He's getting his SH surrounded immediately. TP has been passed, but not used in time. And now he doesn't have a town port on the Blade Master anymore. And this seems like it could already be a game deciding mistake here. The Fiends aren't getting into position though for another web against the Windrider so he's not losing nearly as much as he could have the next coil kills one of the Windriders let's see how many of these ghouls he's gonna end up getting Shadowhunter rebought in the middle uh, of these grunts of course not of these ghouls and one of the grunts is being taken out so losing the SH there losing only one of the grunts though a fiend has been taken down in return and the Windrider has been lost as well so of course a terrible trade for uh, Kiwikaki but I thought it was gonna go a lot worse, but the one fiend was hexed and the other one was being taken down. So uh, he only ended up killing one of the Windriders. Now the expansion has been seen. And with the Alchemist third, the big push is going to occur right now. 57 supply against 55. He's adding here yeah, some more fiends and is trying to go for the kill there. A uh, few illusions are in there, two illusions and four real wind riders. Only one fiend with the army currently. This is quite a tricky position to engage in. Maybe he could pass the orb to the death knight just to have more damage output against the wind riders. But uh, Kiwikaki is having a really difficult time getting into a good angle here with uh, his opponent hiding behind the Great Hall. New Fiend is coming in immediately, Frost Armor is being casted onto that one. He knows that these units are very valuable to him and just as I said, the next Fiend gets caught here on the way. Hex and Focus Fire takes it down very, very quickly. Now the Wind Riders are moving forward though the first Illusion is being webbed and killed quite quickly, even Heat Wave on the Illusion. First real Wind Riders falling here. The Ghouls are standing somewhat strongly against the Grunts. The Wind Riders in a decent position to deal some damage against the Goose, but now he decides to focus fire the heroes here for some reason. He's going for the Alchemist with the Blade Master, with the Wind Riders. In the meantime, taking a lot of damage though, so I don't think that's the brightest decision here to go for the Alchemist. Even if he gets that one, the uh, Fiends, uh, the Wind Riders have yeah, put themselves into a pretty difficult position and now the Blade Master is getting s yeah, killed. And without the Blade Master, it's too much for uh, Kiwikaki to handle here. Uh, yeah, so Syria taking this game somewhat slowly, creeping a lot with the DK, the ghouls, and eventually the lich and the ghouls. And I really like this uh, way of creeping here by him early on, taking the merc camp and then losing the blade master and taking the second merc camp. I'm not really sure if I've ever seen that before with uh, DK and ghouls. And um, yeah, got some decent levels early on, got some decent items. Kiwikaki with the expansion. And then it just came down to basically the fights between the two. The first fight at the left-hand side, which was terrible for Kiwikaki. And um, yeah, just imagine if he hadn't taken that fight, would have had um, 
an additional wind rider he would have had the money that he used to rebuy the shadow hunter at the tavern and one additional grunt and that's already that's quite a bit i guess that pans out to like 12 to 15 supply in total whereas Syria only lost one fiend and then the second fight both of the players really well especially kubikaki hesitant to engage uh, he did engage eventually i claim that he wasted quite a bit of damage output on that alchemist and uh, then getting the blade master trapped in front was too much and this means Cecilia wins the first map and this means we're going to go to uh, Tarina's stand as map number two.